Hey, welcome to CNC Router Projects. In this episode, we'll be looking at this simple, classic oak napkin holder. But it's not so much about the napkin holder itself. It's also about the method of joinery that was used, in this case, wooden dowels, and how to go about this when using the CNC. The base of the napkin holder is simply a rectangle with rounded corners, measuring 7 by 4 and 1 quarter inches. To give it a bit of character, the edges were formed by running a core box bit on the vector at a depth of one quarter inch. Finally, you'll notice four groups of quarter inch diameter holes that were drilled to a depth of three eighths of an inch. The holes are evenly spaced over a distance of two inches, which corresponds to the width of the legs of the side pieces. Although the sides were cut from the same three quarter inch piece of material as the base, I opted to mill that portion of the wood down to a thickness of one half inch. Somehow, having the sides the same thickness of the base just didn't look right to me. Unlike the base piece, the sides call for dowel holes on a surface of the material that isn't accessible when using a 3-axis CNC. So instead of making dowel holes directly, the alternative is to use the precision of the CNC to create a dowel hole drilling jig. This allows the holes to be made manually, but with great accuracy. This is the completed drilling jig that I used for the project. It's made of 3 quarter inch MDF. It has a center section that measures two inches wide to match the width of the legs of the side pieces. It also recreates the same hole spacing that's found in the base. Instead of routing quarter inch holes for the jig, I opted to make them three eighths of an inch in diameter so I could insert these steel spacers. The outside diameter is three eighths of an inch while the inside diameter is a quarter of an inch, making them ideal guides for a quarter inch drill bit. While not absolutely essential, these help prevent the holes in the jig from becoming egged out by poorly aligned drilling, which could ultimately lead to inaccuracy. I typically begin the installation of the spacers while the jig is still on the router table. After putting a very light countersink on the holes, I tap the spacers with a rubber mallet. This almost never seats them perfectly, so I finish up by removing the jig and using a metal C-clamp to flush the spacers with the material. Now it's time to clamp the jig to a work table. I made the jig longer than necessary, specifically to allow for the placement of clamps that would be outside of the work area and not interfere with the drilling process. Ideally, I would have made the jig height one half inch, the same as the thickness of the pieces to be drilled. But I was concerned that the 3 8 inch hole required for the steel spacer inserts wouldn't leave enough material and would end up making the jig too fragile. Instead, I opted for a 3 quarter inch height. This meant that for proper alignment, the material needed to be shimmed up by one eighth of an inch. I had some eighth inch scrap Baltic birch plywood lying around that I used for this purpose. With the jig and the material securely clamped in place, the final step prior to drilling is to determine how deep the bit needs to go into the material and control for that. The overall length of the wooden dowels is one and a quarter inches. Since the base has holes that are three eighths of an inch deep, a little math reveals that these holes need to be 7 eighths of an inch deep. I like to go a little beyond that for space that will be occupied by the glue. Since the thickness of the jig is 3 quarters of an inch, this means that a total of 1 and 5 eighths inch of the drill bit must be available. In place of a depth stop collar, I prefer to use steel spacers or brass bushings and an assortment of washers. So it's finally time to drill. If you have a set of calipers, they can be used to confirm the depth of the holes. If any minor adjustments need to be made, these can usually be done freehand. The assembly process is pretty straightforward, in theory at least. Squeeze some glue into the holes and distribute it, apply glue to the dowels, and insert. In reality, however, even with the dowel holes being deeper than necessary, once the glue has been added, it can still be a challenge to fit the pieces properly. One explanation for this phenomenon is hydraulic pressure. Sometimes an instrument of persuasion, such as a hard surface to press against, or a clamp can be helpful. And here we have the finished product, in its extremely rigid glory. Now this was probably a case of joinery overkill for a napkin holder, but it illustrates the technique. Dowel joints are both versatile and strong, and the CNC can be used to form them with a high degree of precision.